Hello, and thank you for joining me today as I recite part two of the powerful Neville Garner's speech on how to use the power of I am. That's what she did. She put herself into a mood, actually feeling that she was reading a story of her friend and here it came. It's a complete spread, two full pages all about this man and then a little news button on the radio and then confirmation from him on a telephone call from his wife confirming the news bulletin that they're all back on their job. And here now, as he said, for years, after 27 years, I walked through that plant. I thought I'd go crazy. I wanted to climb the wall because of the noise. When I heard the hammers and the bellows and the furnaces, and all these thousands of workmen that constantly ding, I wanted to climb the wall. Now after 4,000 were let out, my footstep echoes through the entire area. I would like to run and scream running towards my office. What he does in the plant I do not know, but if he goes towards his office, undoubtedly he has an executive position in that place and is not working at the furnaces. But he said, you can't imagine when 4,000 were let out how empty the place was. And everything simply echoed and my footsteps seemed like hundreds of things as I walked through the plant towards my office. And many a moment, I wanted to simply jump up and start running. It seemed so empty. She said, all right, that's something. I will remember when and she applied the technique. When your footsteps scare you and you want to run towards the office, now in the clack them all again. So I tell you, I know from my own experience that these moods you catch a mood. I could tell from the mood that possessed me through the day that I would meet a certain character, and I met that character. It may be someone I knew or someone total stranger, but I could tell from the very mood that possessed me. I'm drawing into my world an affinity with that mood. You can catch that mood and create a world that is in harmony with the moon. Anyone can do it. In fact, you're doing it morning, noon, and night anyway. So when you turn to some external God, you're turning to a false God. There is no external God. Every child born a woman is God incarnate. If a man only knew that, there could be no war in the world. Killing man is killing God. For every child born of woman is the incarnation of God. Whether you be black, yellow, pink, white, or any other color, there is no other being in this world but God. 
So the incarnation takes place every time a little child is born and it breathes and you spank it to get it to cry. That moment was the incarnation of God. How can you kill him? How can you hurt him? Just teach him and show him what power is latent within him. For the whole vast world aches for the awakening of the imagination in man. But here tonight, let us keep it on this level. And on this level tonight, when you dream of something wonderful, when you dream of some wonderful objective of this world that is not yet realized, realize who the dreamer is and the dreamer is God. And by dreamer, I mean your own wonderful imagination, now a daydream. That's God. That's God in action. Now do not let your reason and your senses dictate what is possible. All things are possible to God. So suspend for a moment your reason. Suspend the senses that accept the facts of life and let reason dictate it. You'll never go beyond where you are. So suspend them just for a moment and try this technique. What would the feeling be like? How would I feel if they were true that I am already the man that I would like to be. And if I am, how would I see my friends? And how would they see me? It's all within us. So let my wonderful human imagination see them as they would have to see me if it were true. Bring it into my mind's eye and let them see me and let them talk to me and let them congratulate me on my good fortune. And don't duck, accept the congratulations of your friends if they really mean it. Actually play the part all within yourself and then believe it one hundred percent. There's an interval between that imagination act and its fulfillment, as there is between a creative fulfillment. A horse will take 12 months. A woman take nine months. The little sheep will take five months. A chicken will take 21 days. There are intervals of time, so the Bible teaches every vision has its own appointed hour. It ripens, it will flower. If it be late, then wait, for it is sure and it will not be late different intervals of times so it may take me a little bit longer. In this case, with this man, two months to bring back 4,000 who were unemployed. To put his mind at rest that he doesn't have now to feel that he's going to be fired. He can put in now the extra time. Only a little trial, three years and two months will complete his 30 years with Jones and Lachlan. And what's a man of his age? Six more years and then social security. So he'd have both. If it happened now that he wouldn't have it, 
he would be cut on Social Security, and he would be let out without a good retirement fund. So she goes back and reminds him that it happened before. He couldn't afford the roof for the house. And she said, I will see the roof on the house. I remember when it needed a roof. And so she remembered. She told him, I recall telling you the roof is on. She said, I will see the roof on the house. I remember when it needed a roof. And so she remembered. She told him, I recall telling you, I remember when it needed it. Well, soon after, something happened in his work. He got the money and the roof is on. The wife wanted an organ, couldn't afford the organ. She said, I remember when you didn't have one. She has the organ. And she took one after the other of all these things. He still, with all the evidence in the world, he's still working on some outside God. He thinks he's doing the wrong thing. He feels that if perchance the man is simply a devil incarnate and he's taking me from my real God, which means something external to himself, that he fashions out of his own mind and fashions with his own hands. Because all these little nonsenses that we buy and stick them up as holy objects. First of all, no artist really ever designed them. It's an offense to speak of an artist when you see the horrible monstrosities that we buy and stick around a place and call them religious objects. So find he, so find who he is, he is the living God. He is a dead God. So I tell you all that you behold that appears without. It is within. In your own wonderful human imagination of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. All things exist in the human imagination. And everything you see as objective reality was produced by imagining. Think of one thing. Just think of one thing that would simply deny it. You can't think of one thing. So you go to the moon. You first had to imagine it. Had to imagine everything concerning the machine that took you to the moon. Everything in the world first had to be imagined and then executed. All right, the intelligence to do it will come, but you take the blueprint first and conceive it and dwell in it as though it were true. And no power on earth can stop it from becoming so. Your visions will clarify itself at night. It's a different kind of a night. Your days are different. You see people differently. You can't walk by any man and not see him, God incarnate. Can't do it even if he has the most horrible background and he said simply a murderer and it's proven that he is you still see God incarnate but so some to sleep the poor thing doesn't know 
if you can only just get to him and show him that he really is God incarnate. And the one he thought he killed, he has been restored to life. Not to the senses of man, but he is restored in a world just like this. Terrestrial, just like this. About his business, he continues his work until he too awakens from this dream of life. But all will awaken eventually. But why not start now? Start now to tell man who he really is. God and man are one. Man is all imagination and God is man and exists in us as we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination and that is God himself. Nothing but God in the universe. All God.